Japan to the west, which brings it back closer to the New York State border, more towards the Albany and uh, Capital District uh, region. We are, for Long Island, uh, we're looking for a storm impact in the red area. Certainly Suffolk, Nassau, partially New York City, uh, Nassau, we're talking about three inches of rain. Further out in Suffolk, 4.5 inches of rain. New York, two and a half inches of rain, which can cause some flooding, uh, but nothing catastrophic, catastrophic if this track uh, remains. Uh, on Long Island, uh, 40 mile per hour winds, gusts up to 75 miles per hour, uh, which is something to take seriously, storm surge in the sound, three to five feet, in the ocean, four to five feet, okay? Uh, so you will have a storm surge, not what was predicted, but four to five feet is nothing to take lightly. Three to five feet in the sound is uh, nothing to take lightly. Uh, lightly. Uh, I told my brother, who lives uh, out on Long Island, take his boat out of the water. He did not listen. Now he can go put many lines on his boat. Uh, the storm surge we are watching. This is the affected area of the storm, okay? So forget the specific track of the storm, the eye of the storm. What is the affected area by the storm? And that's what you see here. Uh, the numbers are the inches of projected rainfall. So while we're still talking about the eye of the storm hitting Long Island and then the eye heading up towards the Capital District region, Massachusetts, you see the affected area is actually quite large. And the amount of rainfall is actually quite large in many of these areas. And that's what we're concerned about. Uh, the red areas are uh, the most significant rainfall. Uh, so uh, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and then you see uh, a red area towards the Catskills. Uh, and that's what we are concerned about. To total projected rainfall, 8 a.m. Monday, 8 a.m. tomorrow. This is what we're looking at, four inches of rain, three and a half inches of rain, two inches in New York City. You could get up to five inches of rain in Westchester, Hudson Valley, 4.6. Uh, that is a significant amount of rainfall, uh, and it should be taken uh, seriously. And then you see the projected rainfall going into Monday afternoon. The storm hits Long Island and then slows. A slow storm is a problematic storm because when the storm slows, it continues to drop rain for a, an extended period of time. Uh, the variable is how quickly that storm continues to move. Uh, when you see five inches of rain, four inches of rain, the question becomes over what period of time? Is it five inches of rain over four hours or is it five inches of rain over 12 hours? That's all the difference uh, in the world. We already have saturated ground. So the absorption capacity of the ground is limited. And that's what makes this level of rainfall especially uh, problematic. Uh, storm surge forecast, again, three to five feet in the sound, two to four in the ocean. Uh, but that is a significant surge and uh, something that we are preparing for. We have crews out this morning on the beaches that are shoring up the dunes. Uh, we have bulldozers uh, moving. We're seeing light flooding already on the south shore of Long Island. 
uh, and we're just trying to build up those dunes along the south shore to stop flooding in places like Long Beach where we, we tend to see it, you know. Uh, we know where storms hit now. Uh, it's the one advantage to having gone through as many storms uh, as we have gone through. So we're doing the best we can to move sand to protect the shoreline. But again, a three to five foot surge, uh, that is going to be serious and it's something we're going to have to be concerned about. Uh, the uh, more good news, uh, President Biden has approved our emergency declaration today. That is a, what's called a pre-landfall declaration. Uh, very often we have a, an emergency declaration by the federal government after the storm. Why is the emergency declaration important? Because the emergency declaration triggers federal reimbursement. When we have a, when we can obtain a pre-landfall declaration from the federal government, it means all the preparatory work we're now doing will also be subject to federal reimbursement. Uh, so all the deployment of troops, and we have deployed 500 National Guard, uh, 1,000 state police, uh, 500 pieces of equipment, there are DOT personnel, Department of Transportation personnel all across the state. You'll hear from the MTA and the Port Authority. They have been peop having people work uh, all night long. We've moved equipment from as far away as Buffalo down to Long Island. When we have a situation like this, uh, we go into what we call flex mode, where the area of st the state that is affected we flex all the equipment and personnel to that affected area. That is all very expensive. And this federal declaration means the state and the local governments will be reimbursed for that cost. Uh, so thank you very much, President Biden, who is a good man and a good soul. I've known him a long time. And he is just fundamentally a person who uh, always does the right thing on a human level and a personal level. And to me, that comes first before the politician or the elected official. He's a good man, and he, he does the right thing. Uh, bad news is this. That rainfall in the Catskills is a significant problem. Uh, Remember, think Irene and Lee, not Superstorm Sandy. Think Irene and Lee. We sat in this room. It was forecast to hit New York City. And uh, it turned, and it didn't hit New York City. And everybody said, whoa, amen, it didn't hit New York City. But when it turned, it hit the Catskills. And it hit the Catskills with rain. And rain, and a high level of rain over a short period of time is highly problematic for that entire Hudson Valley. The Hudson Valley, think of the topography. You have hills, you have creeks. The water comes running down those hills, hits what was a creek, and turns it into a ravaging river. Uh, I have seen towns float away. Uh, we spent weeks and weeks digging out towns. I've seen homes floating by. Uh, Margaretville, Prattsville, uh, small towns in these mountainous areas get devastated by the rain. Westchester, they're talking about a possible five inches of rain. So. Uh, the problem has shifted. Uh, Long Island is going to have problems, but the number one priority for us now is keeping an eye on that Hudson Valley, Capital District South. Uh, Mike Copey can explain more. Uh, but five inches of rain, four inches of rain, saturated soil, uh, creeks turning into ravaging rivers, homes being destroyed, 
that is still a very real possibility. We know what happened with Irene and Lee. Uh, it wasn't that long ago. Think back to that. Think back to those areas. Think back to Asopus. Think back to those creeks. You know the creeks that will overflow. You know the creeks that have debris and wind up backing up. Uh, those areas, we have to take special precaution. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, the MTA, General Lieber, and uh, Port Authority, um, Rick Cotton, for their update. Uh, but first, I want to share you one quick abbreviated story I was thinking about today, Sunday. The cynical man in the storm. You know the story about the cynical man in the storm? Cynical man uh, is listening to the politicians, and the politicians are on TV warning about the storm, and the cynical man says, ah, they're politicians. I don't trust them. They don't know what they're talking about. Uh, and uh, he says, I'm a God-fearing man. Uh, God will take care of me. And he does nothing. And the rain keeps coming, and the rain keeps coming, and now there's about uh, two feet of rain uh, and flooding. And the emergency officials come out in a truck, and they knock on the door, and they say, we have a big truck. You were supposed to evacuate, but we have a big truck, and we can take you and your belongings to safety. And the cynical man says to the emergency officials, no, I'm a God-fearing man. I go to church every Sunday. He will take care of me. And the emergency officials leave. Rain keeps coming. Now, six feet of rain. A boat pulls up in front of the house with the emergency officials. They say, there's six feet of rain. We have a boat. Come out. We'll put you in the boat. We'll take you to safety. Man says, no, I'm a God-fearing man. I go to church every Sunday. The Lord will take care of me. They said, I know you said that before, but now you're six feet of rain. No, they leave. Uh, now it keeps raining and raining, and the creek turns into a river, and it comes over the banks. Now the cynical man is standing on the roof of his home, and the water is up to his neck, and it is lapping his mouth. Just his head is above the water. And he's looking up at the sky, and he hears a rumbling sound. And from the rumbling sound, the clouds start to part. And he's looking up, and he's looking up. And it's a helicopter with the emergency officials. And they throw down a rope. And they say, grab the rope. It's still not too late. We can take you to safety. And the cynical man with his head above the water says, no, I'm a God-fearing man. I go to church every Sunday. The Lord will take care of this. They say, forget that. Grab the rope. Next scene, cynical man is at the pearly gates. And he meets our maker. Uh, and our maker says, welcome uh, to the pearly gates. And the cynical man says, well, thank you. Uh, it's good to be here. It's better than the alternative. But you know, I'm confused. Uh, I went to church every Sunday. I'm a God-fearing man. I thought you would take care of me. And our maker turns back to the cynical man and says, you're confused. I'm confused. I sent a truck, a boat, and a helicopter. What happened? <laughs> so there's only so much we can do. It's up to you. You know the areas that are going to flood. Uh, you know the areas that Sandy affected, Irene affected, Lee affected. Uh, please act responsibly. With that, let me turn it over to Jan O'Lieber, who is uh, all things MTA. He has been extraordinary uh, in public service. Uh, he has constructed projects that nobody thought could be constru constructed. Uh, he did it when the entire bureaucracy told him it was impossible, L-train tunnel, finishing the Second Avenue subway, uh, and he's responsible for the operation now, and it could not be in better hands, in my opinion. General Lieber. Thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you for your kind words. Um, look, this is a huge emergency, and we are, as always, prioritizing the safety of the customers and our employees. Literally thousands of MTA staffers have been summoned back to work to engage in the preparations for this storm. We have been working the pumping infrastructure to make sure the subway system is not inundated. We've been deploying uh, mobile pumping systems uh, to be ready if there are areas uh, uh, that are inundated. Um, uh, stuff like clearing drains installing, uh, plugging the vents in the areas of the subway system which are low-lying, which is something that we have now uh, developed equipment for uh, post-Sandy, and we've been deploying that 
uh, in select locations. On the commuter railroads, we've got not just all the, the, the equipment and trucks and systems necessary to, to uh, get rid of trees which are felled onto tracks, but we have patrol trains uh, and rescue trains that are pre-deployed uh, to be ready in the event, God forbid, uh, that a train becomes uh, uh, stopped for some reason. Um, so we are fully ready. We've got rescue, we've got stone trains ready to, to rebuild the ballast of the track if the water uh, does damage there. So the preparations have been extraordinary and, uh, and the result is that we have right now the New York City subway and bus system, New York City Transit, is operating without any suspensions. We have three diversions of bus routes because of localized water conditions, but we have been able to preserve uh, the full operation of our, our bus and subway system. On, uh, on Long Island Railroad and Metro North, we have suspensions of service, which we've been messaging aggressively to our customers to make sure everybody knew yesterday, starting uh, early, early yesterday, to, if possible, to get off the east end of Long Island, that we were today suspending service on the Montauk branch, uh, east of Patchogue and on the Greenport branch, east of Ronkonkoma, so we let everybody know it was time to move uh, so they wouldn't be stuck. Uh, I think that messaging has been effective. On Metro North, um, we suspended entirely the New Haven line uh, because that's right at the coast, uh, and also uh, the Harlem line, uh, the branch that goes to Wasaic, which is in uh, harm's way um, to some extent for the, the rain issues that you, that you have identified. Um, we also have relocated uh, trains out of yards and other areas where they might be subject to some flooding. So especially in the New Haven yard, we moved the Metro North trains out. So everything has been done. We have all of the protocols in place, of course, for in the event of high winds and, and, and the standards we use in terms of wind velocity to close bridges. As of last night, we, we were barring uh, uh, tractor trailers and tandem trailers which didn't have full loads because those have some risk in wind, um, but we're ready on all fronts. And the result is that I think the system is operating well because of those preparations. And uh, MTA.info and the My MTA app will continue to provide real-time information to the public. Uh, and we urge folks, as you have said, uh, if you don't need to travel, please stay home. And if you absolutely, absolutely must travel in the city, please take mass transit. Thank you, Governor. Great. Thank you very much, Jano. Uh, we'll now go to Rick Cotton, who runs the Port Authority. Again, that's uh, LaGuardia Airport, JFK Airport. Uh, we're in the midst, as you know, of building a new LaGuardia Airport while we operate the existing LaGuardia Airport. Uh, easier said than done. Uh, but the LaGuardia Airport, which is well underway for those people who have been by it, it's going to be the first new airport in the United States of America in 25 years. Uh, so we're quite proud of that, and the JFK Airport. Uh, and Rick has been spearheading both of those projects. When he started, Rick, he had a full head of black hair just two years ago. Uh, so it gives you a sense of uh, the kind of strain that he's been under. Rick Cotton. Uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, le let me begin by saying that the Port Authority has mobilized hundreds of extra staff at all of its facilities. Uh, to prepare for the storm, to be sure that all equipment is operating, all precautions have been taken, and to be in place in the event <coughs> of, uh, of uh, any issues that do, that do develop. And I want to begin by thanking the Port Authority employees who have responded uh, to this assignment. Let me begin with the airports. Uh, this storm will have, is having <coughs> a significant impact on flight activity. Uh, each of the airports has activated, <coughs> excuse me, its emergency operations centers. Uh, all communication with every, uh, every aspect of the airports, airlines, maintenance, uh, staff uh, across the board uh, is being coordinated through their emergency operations centers. Uh, and we have everything in place uh, to be able to handle uh, any problems that do develop. As of this morning, 23 percent of flights at LaGuardia have been canceled. 11 percent of flights at JFK have been canceled. 22 percent of flights at Newark have been canceled. Additional cancellations and delays may occur depending on the rain, the wind, and, uh, and general weather conditions. 
So at this point, however, the airports do not expect any flooding conditions at any of the airports. All of the anti-flood provisions are in place and we do not expect the surge to cause any flooding uh, problems at the airport. However, travelers should be sure to check with their airlines uh, in terms of the current status of their flights. Uh, with respect to our bridges, empty tractor trailers have been banned from the bridges leading from Staten Island to New Jersey and the George Washington Bridge is watching the wind levels very carefully in the event such a ban needs to be imposed there. Uh, with that, Governor, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Uh, one thing to remember, we've gone through Superstorm Sandy, Irene, Lee, other tropical storms. The system has been redesigned because of those circumstances. So the MTA, for example, uh, we installed pumps all through the MTA system. Uh, when you drive through tunnels, Hurricane Sandy, we had the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, uh, Queens Midtown Tunnel. Tunnels were actually filled with water. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers came up to help. They never pumped out a tunnel. They now have, uh, you'll notice when you enter them, doors at both ends of the tunnels. And they were manufactured by a submarine company. So if it gets really bad, you'll see they will be closed. We close these submarine doors so the tunnels remain waterproof until uh, after the occasion. Same thing with the Port Authority and the airports. Uh, we've extended the uh, water protection, the water barriers all around the airport uh, so there's less water intrusion. So we are uh, not only better prepared from an emergency management point of view, we are physically better prepared from an engineering point of view. Uh, and uh, I think that's one of the things that's going to reduce the disruption here. Uh, let's take uh, a few topic, a few questions. Let's do it on topic, those two words on topic. We're dealing with an emergency and New Yorkers want to hear about an emergency. Thank you very much, Governor. If you'd like to ask a question, please use the raised hand function. At the bottom of your window, we're just going to take a couple of seconds to compile the Q&A roster. Thanks. Governor, your first question comes from Kevin Duggan of AM New York. Kevin, your mic is open. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, Kevin. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Um, I wanted to ask if you still plan to resign tomorrow. And uh, if you do still plan to do that, where is uh, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul at this? Why is she not at this meeting today? Yeah, the Lieutenant Governor has been briefed uh, on all of this, and we're in constant communication. Uh, the event should be over by tomorrow p.m. Uh, at this point, uh, knock for MICA, we don't experience, uh, we don't expect uh, any real significant damage post the event, nothing on the scale of Hurricane uh, Superstorm Sandy, for example. Uh, obviously, we have to do an assessment. Uh, everything is in place. I have asked my emergency management team to the extent they were thinking of leaving uh, uh, Tuesday that uh, I would uh, appreciate the accommodation for the good of the state if they could stay in place until this situation is completed, depending on what the aftermath uh, needs to be. Uh, we brief the Assembly, we brief the Senate, we brief the Congressional delegation. As I mentioned, we're working hand in glove with the federal government, FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency is on site, they're deployed all across the state. So uh, everyone is briefed. Uh, and yes, uh, my final day is uh, tomorrow, uh, Tuesday morning. Governor, your next question comes from Clayton Guza of the Daily News. Clayton, your mic is open. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? I can hear you, Clayton. 
Hi, uh, this is more for Jano than for you, Governor. Uh, Jano, two questions. You didn't give an update on the bridges and tunnels this time last year when Isaiah's rolled through. You had, I think, five trucks blow over on the Verrazano. Are the, are, are, is the Verrazano closed, or is, do you have a tractor-trailer ban, empty tractor-trailer ban? That's the first part. And the second part, um, how is Coney Island Yard looking right now? Um, is, it, is it at risk of being hit by the surge? The resiliency work at... Um, at that location um, has not been completed. So I'm curious if the surge is threatening Coney Island Yard and what's your plan for um, your bridges and tunnels, Jenna? Well, the, first of all, Coney Island Yard is, is functioning. We did, have, uh, we did have three trains which uh, got stopped by water in Coney Island Yard, but otherwise um, the, the improvements that have been made um, post Sandy have uh, started to, to yield benefit and Coney Island Yard uh, which is a huge project where we are taking all of the cabling onto bridges to make sure that that incredibly important facility for the subway system can always function. Uh, the improvements have, have begun to yield benefit. Uh, so so that's, that, that's in good shape. Um, on the bridges and tunnels, we have established standards for wind velocity. When we shut down, they're, you know, they're obviously science-based, and obviously they're going to be put into effect as soon as we uh, reach those levels. We have not reached those levels yet, Clayton, but we have instituted, as you referred to, the ban on empty tractor trailers on the Verrazano starting now, starting last night, actually. Great. Uh, let me say this, please, in closing. This is an evolving situation. We showed you the most recent track of the, uh, of the tropical storm. It is downgraded. That's good news. I don't want New Yorkers to say, oh, this is great, there's nothing to worry about. There is plenty to worry about. Uh, first, those tracks can change. And if that storm moves 40 miles uh, west, we have a much different situation. And that is very possible. Uh, also, besides the storm track, itself, the affected area is very large. And the amount of rainfall is very large. And the potential for serious damaging, damage from flooding is very large. So please uh, take precaution. We will continue to update you through the day if things change. Uh, we are still looking at a 24-hour period this will not really be uh, over or we won't see the storm pass until about tomorrow, 2, 3 p.m. So we have a long way to go. And if that storm, which is slowing down, if it slows and continues to drop rain, we're going to have real issues. Uh, so I said there's good news. I said there's bad news. Uh, but uh, please, uh, now is not the time to say we're out of harm's way. We are not out of harm's way. We'll update you if there's any changes today, and uh, we'll speak to you tomorrow about where we are, and we'll also have a sense of what type of damage actually happened uh, by tomorrow. But we're on it uh, all today, all through tonight until this storm passes and until we know what kind of damage has been done. And we ask you to remain attentive and cautious uh, and smart and smart. Do what you need to do, please. Don't be the cynical man and the storm. Thank you very much.